It happens every game. A questionable call makes you start thinking the game is rigged, especially when it goes against your team. Most of the time, this is just banter or reaction to emotion, as replay has held police bad calls, but not entirely. And then there are moments when you say to yourself, this is definitely fixed. And though many will say you should go take off your tinfoil hat and stick to holding fast that the world is flat, sometimes you will get actual confirmation that a game was rigged. It's rare, but most of the time, it's putting together the circumstances, adding up the shadiness, and letting people know we aren't stupid. So here are the five most blatantly rigged moments in sport. Get ready to smash some TVs. Number 5, 1972 Olympic gold medal basketball game. This game really pisses me off and I wasn't even born when it happened. In 1972 in Munich, the worst Olympics ever, the world was on stage and the world showed how little progress was made on pretty much all fronts. And if having athletes taken hostage and being murdered wasn't bad enough, rigging gold medal games certainly wasn't out of the IOC's purview now was it? The Americans, led by college kids like Doug Collins, had cruised to the gold medal game and faced the Soviet team, who were basically professionals. Throughout the game, the Soviets received favorable calls and pretty much led the entire game until with three seconds left, trailing by one, Doug Collins got fouled hard as he went to the basket. And here's where the rigging started. Collins would make the first free throw simple, all tied up. Then during his second free throw, a horn sounded from the scorer's table as Collins shot. It went in, but the Russians claimed that they had called timeout. It wasn't granted. The Russians, seeing that the timeout had not been granted, inbounded the ball and then play was stopped with one second because a whiny Russian bitch ran to the scorer's table even though the game should have been ending with live play. Somehow the play was officially stopped and the Russians were not assessed a technical foul. Then it was decided that no timeout would be granted and the score was 51-50 US. Then William Jones, a Brit and official who had no authority over the game, came down from the sidelines and demanded that the game clock be reset to three seconds and the Russians get another chance to inbound. Then play resumed and the Russians couldn't get a shot off and time expired. But wait. The little bitches at the scorer's table couldn't get the clock reset properly and once again, for a third time, the Russians got a chance to win the game. This time, of course, the Russians finally sunk their basket and I'm sure if he missed, another foul would have happened or that bitch William Jones would have made up another rule to give the Russians the win. To this day, the US team has refused to accept their silver medals, having won the game twice. It's all good though, we won the Cold War and stuff and this happened. Number four, Nikisha Sales breaks UConn's scoring record. This one you've probably never heard of, but you should have. In 1998, Nikisha Sales of the UConn women's basketball team was one point shy of breaking her team's career scoring record until she suffered a season ending injury. Rather than just chalking things up to some bad luck, head coach Gina Oriema concocted a scheme to get her the record. In cahoots with the Villanova head coach, Sales was allowed to enter a game, mind you, basically on crutches, get the ball handed to her underneath the basket, and lay it in for the record. I guess that's kind of cool if you like your bullshit extra steamy. And imagine if this had happened in the men's game, what kind of mockery and spectacle that would have created. But oh, this was the women's game in 1998, and just like the WNBA, you've never heard of this incident. Number three, 2002 NBA Western Conference Finals, Game 6. In 2002, the NBA needed a boost, and the Lakers going for a three-peat with Kobe Bryant was just what they needed. The problem was a small market team from Northern California was ruining their plans. The Sacramento Kings had assembled a gritty, tough lineup that featured Chris Webber and Mike Bebby with veterans like Vladi Divox and Scott Pollard. And they jumped out to an amazing 3-2 lead on the Lakers and looked very good doing so. In fact, the Lakers looked like they got punched in the mouth until game six when the Lakers literally got all the calls, particularly in the fourth quarter as they shot 27 free throws and all of the Sacramento players were in foul trouble. The game was laughable. Even worse, it was on Sacramento's home floor. Tim Donaghy, the ref who was convicted of rigging games, says the game was rigged. Though there has never been any hard evidence of that, we're not stupid. 
Number two, the 1919 Black Sox scandal. Sometimes we get to speculate about whether something was fixed, and then sometimes we know for sure. And in 1919, the World Series was rigged harder than all of the Carnival games combined. In the ultimate FU to their owner, Cheapskate Charlie Comiskey, the 1919 White Sox decided to not only tank in the World Series, but also get paid for it. And that's what they did. But like any racket, people run their mouths and a grand jury launched an investigation and now there's this amazingly boring movie about it called Eight Men Out. And if you want the rest of the story, just go watch that and bring your pillow because your insomnia will be cured. Number one, Roy Jones Jr. getting hosed. Back to the Olympics, the most tilted organization in the world. These guys make FIFA look like the freaking Boy Scouts. In 1988, the IOC put a gun to Roy Jones Jr.'s head and literally stole his gold medal from him. At least that's what his fight with Park Si Hoon looked like. All Jones did was pummel Park's face like two guys banging a post into the ground for three straight rounds. I watched this fight live when I was a kid and couldn't believe Park's head had not flown out of the ring. A serious beatdown plus two standing eight counts left no doubt in anyone's mind who the winner was until the ref said that Park was the winner and no, Steve Harvey was not the ref. Park, stunned and either unaware that the outcome had been rigged or started to feel really guilty about the whole thing, lifted up Jones and tried to console him. Even he knew this was some bullshit. Of course, Jones would go on to become one of the greatest middleweights ever while Park became a PE teacher, never turning pro. Ah, the Olympics, where people get robbed for real. Agree with my list? Think I left any off? Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. And as always, I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this video.